Are we online? Yes, we are online. Guys, just wait for one second. I'm trying to warn people that the other stream did not work and we are changing the channels, okay? Just wait a moment there and you guys wait a moment here. Awkward silence, not <laughs> silence. Let's see if people are finding us. There we go, we are live. Hmm. We have a lot more space than we, we think. Oh well. Good. Let's just wait for a moment so everybody comes online. So, people are finding us, that's good. Let's wait a few more seconds and then we can start. We didn't miss anything yet, don't worry. I think we are ready to start. Ah, hello everybody! <laughs> Welcome to the first TCS Live. Sorry for the technical difficulties that we had in the beginning. I hope everybody is listening to us. If you're not or if you're having problems with the video, please send us a message on YouTube. I can read the messages and read the questions. And we are here today to talk about rhythm and music. My name is Michael and I'm here with Stefan. Say hi Stefan. <laughs> hi Michael. Hi everybody. <laughs> and Natalie. Hello. And Andreas. Hi. And before we start with a serious conversation, um, today is the first day of spring and it's the first day in 124 years that spring comes so early. And even though it's a very rainy and cloudy day, I thought we can start with a spring song to set up the mood. So shall we sing? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> sing here all the time but before before we teach everybody this specific song and I just want to let you know that all the songs that we're going to be singing here today they are available on our website so campfieldschool.org you can get the PDF with all the songs and follow with us and that's all is also there for future uh, perusing, perusing <laughs> checking out and <laughs> learning so today we are here to talk about rhythm and the campus school it's 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 very strong on how we do things and how we we, we create this rhythm our surrounding the students. 
so they can relax and develop. Shall we talk a little bit about that before we sing some more? Who wants to start? <laughs> I mean, um, not having prepared or anything, but um, the first thing that comes to my mind is just the meals. And I mean, I know that with some of you, we've, you might have heard this before if you've been to some of our parent workshops or so. So I hope I'm not repeating old platitudes, but sometimes the most basic stuff is, is the most significant for, for many of our students, I think. And so just to have regular meals, that's not necessarily something that's common anymore in our society. And I know that that happens to us too when we're on vacation or as soon as the students are gone. You know, I, I know I find myself suddenly eating lunch at three instead of one or twelve. So I think, you know, again, that's just one element. But, but you can really structure your whole day around having your meals at, at fairly, pretty much the same time every day. I mean, most of you know that we're very strict with our times and our schedule here. I don't know that it has to be that strict, but many of our students really have that inner clock and we might we sometimes see differences even when a meal starts 15 minutes later or earlier or when we have a celebration and suddenly suffers an hour later, we might have some problems with some of our students. So um, I think to have really, you know, to have your break, to have three three meals together as a family, uh, three meals a day together, um, breakfast, eight or nine is fine, I would say, and lunch between 12 and one, and the supper between six and nine. That kind of is the foundation for, for a really well-structured, rhythmical day. Absolutely. That being said, I know that, you know, for, for one of you or all of you, um, that might be different in your case, and speaking generically, so I guess um, if any of you have a question, you can talk more specifically later. Um, are people saying they didn't understand me? Do I need to repeat things? Well, I'll try to be louder. <laughs> it's, it's our first attempt of this, so we are trying to figure out the technicalities of it. So we heard that the audio is not super loud, so we will try to speak louder. The equipment is on the loudest as possible. And I can try to move the mic closer. Let's see. Ah. So I was just speaking about the uh, importance of having um, a structured day with three meals a day as a foundation. And then I guess one, one can work around those three meals to create a bit more of a schedule, you know. So, for example, I think many of our students would be helped by knowing, okay, every day after breakfast is when we go for a walk for an hour or when we do a certain activity. And, for example, in terms of personal hygiene, many of our students know, okay, in the evening after supper is when I take my shower or in the morning and that those things are, are pretty much kind of set so that they have some building blocks throughout the day that they can orient themselves by because for many of our students they orient themselves by the things that are actually happening and not so much by what we tell them sometimes so the more regular routine activities um, you can build into your day I think the more likely it is that, that the students will have a kind of an anchor in the daily rhythm. Why is it important to establish those routines and to anchor what, what that helps? Well, I think first of all, maybe I'll have to take a step back. I think rhythms in general, we know as people, we have reactions to rhythms. We rely on those rhythms. You know, if you just think of night and day, for example, as a cycle that definitely affects us, right? Like, how do you feel when you go really late to bed one night and you have to wake up the same time in the morning or how your whole day might be off because you know you you're sleeping in and you're just kind of not in sync with what's going on so i think rhythms are really important for us in general in that way and i think you know like on the one hand you have this this experience of how you 
sleep and how you wake up. But then Andreas was just talking a little bit about the meals and how you structure your day also, right? So in a way, the way you the way you 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 create your own rhythm, it can be helpful, it can be unhelpful for you. And I think that's something we, we need to be very aware of. And for everybody that might be a little bit different and some of us might be able to do it themselves. But like Andrea said already, also our students are usually not really able to do it themselves or notice what might be helpful, what might be unhelpful, and therefore we have to step in and try and create something that's healthy for them. Yeah. I think what's relevant is also um, rhythm is linked to breathing. So we create times in the day when we really engage the students, and then we make sure there's a time to really breathe out. And this kind of engaging and letting go is really important that there are times to be all together and um, focus on something and then you know to have the chill out time and just peace and quiet and i received some messages from parents asking a lot about how is our rhythm here so they can reproduce at home and, mm -hmm. and, that, and that becomes quite difficult because of the setting, right? The setting is different, the, the rhythm is different. So it is important for the parents to try to reproduce what we do here or it's, is it better if they find their own rhythm that works for their house, for their home? Yeah, I, mean, I think probably a little bit of both. And again, I, I know that every individual situation is gonna be different for you. I think, you know, apart from the environment we have here, or, or part of the environment we have here is also that, unlike most family households, we have a whole group of students and helpers and staff who do this rhythm together. And I think the more you can get the rest of your family on board with the meal times or other um, rhythmical activities that you do, the more likely it is that your, your child is going to tag along, which is a lot what we see here. We all have breakfast at seven, so um, all the students, or eight, sorry, at eight, um, all, all the students go along with it because it's kind of a group effect. So I'm aware that that might be difficult to, to do the same at home. At the same time, I, I think it's maybe good to take our rhythm as a starting point and see, and see how much, and maybe it's more like, would be more a weekend rhythm because obviously you're not going to have the same kind of school exposure, even though you might have some, you know, educational or other activities happening during the day, but you're not going to have the same day that we have during the weekday. But you could try to model it based on, uh, on what we do on a Saturday and kind of see to what degree it's possible to um, keep, keep up what, what we do here, knowing that it's not the same environment and, and you might also have to individualize it according to what your needs are because you are part of the family too and what you want should count too. It shouldn't just all revolve around the students. And that's that's very important because I, I notice that sometimes the parents have that urge to create a whole program to keep their children engaged 24-7. It's a little bit what Natalie said as well that it's it's part of human life to have this activity and then this breathing out, this, this stopping for a moment and relaxing and that's important for the kids as well, right? To, to train that. One thing that I, I really admire here and that I learned when I came to Camp Hill is this rhythm of the meals, how we do things at meal times and that, that brings this whole outdoor transition to center and then do it all together. Does anyone, well, anyone wants to talk a little bit on, on how we do this transition into meal time and how we do the meals? I mean, exactly what we do at the meal times? I think about how, how we create this like expansion and contraction to start together and to, to have this moment of peace and, and this mood of supper time, for mm -hmm. example. I mean, we can talk about when the children come home from morning school at lunchtime. We usually we gather in the living room and everyone has time to sort of breathe out after school. 
And when everyone's back, say 12.45, 12.50, we, we gather in a circle and we invite everybody to the table. And that will be one individual in the circle. It does, it's not the same person every time. The children or the adults. Then we all go and sit down and we'll sing a song. We'll sing a grace before the meal. And then we will take hands and say, may the meal be blessed. And one person will serve the meal, or two people, and we only start once everyone else is served. And this is something that um, the children are actually really able to do. And we share our meal together, we have conversation, and at the end of the meal, we have lit a candle, and then we snuff it at the end um, and say thank you for the meal together. And we disperse after that. And I think what's important to note also is, you know, we're, we're bringing these elements in like the candle you were mm -hmm. just talking about to make it more conscious also, right? Yeah. Because for example, some people might think, okay, my child needs more engagement and then they'll be able to manage. So maybe we'll put the TV on at the same time or something, right? And often with our children, actually, we feel like it's much more helpful to help them be present in the moment and engage with what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we don't have any electronic things happening at the time. And we have um, and we have a candle that, as I said already, you know, to bring consciousness, to really mark a beginning and an end. And it's really, like you said very nicely, you know, it's together. Mm -hmm. We start together and we finish together. And that's the activity at that moment. Um, because very easily, I think, in our world today, people just eat on the go and dice those kinds of things and that has all kinds of issues, right? You have mm -hmm. digestive issues, you don't come to peace, right? So it's really linked with sitting down, it's a breathing out moment, it's a social time and we nourish ourselves, but it's not too much at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And those markers are also something that helps us, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I come to the lunch from from Let's things. Talk louder. Still louder. Still louder. <laughs> Some, sometimes I come to, uh, to lunch and I've had a busy morning and then I have to remind myself, oh, wait a minute, we're going to take a moment before we go to the table. And so so it, I think it helps all of us. So it's not only for the students, it's for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's incredible how the students react to that, right? When you, when you are together in a circle, and the adults actually get a moment of peace and quiet and mm -hmm. just just focus for one moment. The students, that brings that in them as well. I yeah. think that's very important. And one of my former house parents would always say like, okay, we have a candle today, but today we're going to have a crystal or today we're just going to have the table and going to be around and there's some flowers. And it's not that like we need a candle to focus. It's it's. Just as I said, it's a symbol. It's a it's a physical representation of something that will bring us together, and yeah. you can find your own element in your home that can use be used for that. Uh, and we will share some um, meal songs later on. Uh, and again, there's tons of them. Each house have a huge collection of songs. And you can always contact your house parents if you want a specific song that your child sing in their house. We're going to, to teach one that we sing here in Woodledge that it's really nice. Um, kind of changing a little bit the focus. Um, we're, I want to talk a little bit about the, the rhythms of the year and how we, we experience that because a, a lot of these students don't have the concept of time and we kind of have, like, again, these outdoor representations that show them and give them rhythm, that give them peace and like tranquility to know that that's what's gonna happen. And one of the things that we do a lot is birthdays. It's, it's mm -hmm. one of the big, big rhythm, the rhythmic uh, passages of time. Mm -hmm. um, and for that, I'm like, for us to start by singing a happy birthday song and also especially because today 
is the birthday of one of our students here from Woodledge. It's Alice and like she's away, but we are we we want to celebrate and sing for her, and that's one of the birthday songs that we do here in Beaver Run. And Flora is going to join us as well for this birthday song. And we're going to first sing our common birthday song. It's the first one. It's the second one on the page that we have on our website. And then Natalie is going to tell a little bit of the of the other birthday song that we have here and she's going to teach us how to do it. Alright. So this one is for Alice and then we're going to teach you how to do it. So the second one. The second one first. Happy birthday dear Alice, happy birthday to you. We come singing, wishes bringing, fa la 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 la. Happy birthday dear Alice, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Alice, happy birthday to you. We come singing, wishes bringing, fa la 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 la. We come singing, wishes bringing. Happy birthday, Alice! We miss you! <laughs> so this is, is a very traditional Camp Hill song and you will hear this happy birthday song all over the world in all different kinds of Camp Hill and should we go line by line and teach them this one and then we can talk about the other one and talk about the ear rhythms? Does that work? Yeah, you want to do it? I wonder if it's easier that you just sing it, because okay. I don't know if it's easier when they hear many voices to, to sing it back, I don't know. So Natalie will sing us okay. Okay. Happy, birthday. happy birthday song. Okay, so the words are happy birthday dear anybody, happy birthday to you. So we're saying happy birthday dear Alice, happy birthday to you. And then the next line is we come singing, wishes bringing. Fa la 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 la. We come singing, wishes bringing. Fa la 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 la. Last line is Happy birthday, dear. Anybody? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alice. Happy birthday to you. And this song can be done in a round. So after you've sung the first happy birthday dear Ellis, happy birthday to you, someone can break off and start again while the others continue. And it's very beautiful in a round. So do you want to sing one more time by yourself and then we, we join on the second version, on the second time? Yes, okay. And then we move on to the next song. Okay, so... Happy birthday, dear Alice, happy birthday to you. We come singing, wishes bringing, fa la 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 la. Happy birthday, dear Alice, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alice, happy birthday to you. We come singing. Thank you. So this is very easy and every single student from the Campion School knows and loves this song. So you can introduce that as a birthday song for your family as well. <laughs> and how we see the ear rhythms and how we can incorporate that into this spring time that we are going through now. It's a more big question. Well, I guess maybe first of all, what's important to say is that, um, as I said earlier, you know, there's bigger rhythms like day and night and the, the rhythm of the year is very similar in a way. It's also a bigger kind of rhythm. And um, I think for us, especially here, if you've been on our campus, you know very much or very well that, you know, we live all surrounded by nature. So, you know, we have a 
physical representation, a <laughs> physical model of what's happening throughout the year right outside our windows. We just need to look, right? You can see how in the fall the, the leaves are turning red and yellow and um, brown and then falling and the trees are bare, then there's the winter, right? We might get snow, we might not, it definitely gets cold, but we'll see that there's no, the green is kind of going away and then in the spring we're seeing the flowers sprouting again and the green is coming back and then in the summer it's all, by then it's all bloomed and it's beautiful and warm, right? Mm -hmm. So and all of those things obviously have an, have an effect on us, right? Just, just the same way that breathing has an effect on us and how fast you breathe changes the way you, <laughs> you perceive the world, right? If you breathe really fast, you might get dizzy, whatever, yearly rhythms. <laughs> So if you think of the year and what it does to you, right? Like in the winter, we often experience here how we want to, you know, crawl into bed and maybe it's cold or something, you know, it's harder to get up in the morning, it's dark outside. So all of those things have an effect on us. And so, you know, we, we want to honor that and value that. And we have songs as well for each of those seasons that kind of address that. And the same way that the seasons are changing, we also have festivals that we celebrate, um, you know, according to the year. And so, yeah, these things are very, again, very clear markers of what's happening, right? And we always try to make each other and the students aware of, you know, look, look what's happening, see, pay attention. Um, Yeah, the, the festivals as markers, they, they, help, uh, they help us to mark these different things that we observe in nature. So even though there, there is a kind of quality of many of the religious festivals in their own right, that's not necessarily even the main reason why we um, follow them so strongly here, because they, they help the students, you know, just like the candle at the meal table, mm -hmm. they help the students to mark the different seasons. And many of the religious festivals, um, it doesn't even matter what religion they come from, they are often very closely tied to nature. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have this wonderful Loi Kratong festival that um, some of our Thai co-workers have brought to us, which is in November, right? Is it? Yeah. It's in November and, you know, many of these festivals, uh, you know, be in the darker time of the year have to do with light. So um, there's these different elements of in the Loi Kratong festival, we float the boats with the candle down the river and the students love that. And then when that repeat, repeats every time the same year, that helps them to make that relationship to, to nature that you just described. And so um, that's kind of a, another reason why we celebrate so many festivals and why we're also always open and inviting co-workers who come from different cultures to bring their own celebrations to us because all these things help us to mark, mark the year and also kind of be open to different cultures and so I'm always very excited when when something new when something new comes from people from different cultures. I'm sorry Chipkat, uh, we are very cozy together here so we are, our voice is going down and down and down people in home, at home is saying speak up please. <laughs> Um, just to add to that um, <laughs> seasonal element, we always try and reflect the season outside within the home. So we have seasonal flowers on the table, maybe branches from outside. We have a season table and sort of colours that reflect the time of year. Um, we also have a lovely 87-year-old man on campus called Christoph Andreas who frames a lot of pictures and he goes around the houses changing them for all the seasons um, relevant to that time and he's very strict about <laughs> when those times are um, but he's aware of how much it can help the children navigate the year um, yeah mm -hmm. so it's it's all about always creating this visual uh, tactile representation of of this, this passage of time and, and those experiences so the students can, can relate yeah. and ease and relax into what's happening, right? It's like anchors within the year, um, you know, to 
hold them. And that's the same case, for example, if you're trying to build a, like a program or a routine for your child, it would help if it's something that it, it can physically, that they can physically see mm -hmm. what is that rhythm that you're proposing or offering for the next few weeks. Absolutely. Visual elements, poetry, music, all of these are great. And a lot of the time, music and poetry can go in better than speech. Um, and just talking, you know? It's, it's easy to follow a rhythm, right? I think yeah. one of the songs that, that we have on this file that's on our website, campioschool.org, is uh, Come Follow, Follow. Mm -hmm. And that's a song that a lot of school uses for, trans use for transitions when a child has to go from one place to the other you don't even need to know the, the lyrics you kind of hum the melody and kind of easy into that transition from one place to the other mm -hmm. and i think that's the, the soothing of of the song and the point that they always bring this this rhythmic gesture that that helps the students to to transition to to settle to to calm down mm -hmm. We can we try that one? Yeah. Are there any questions? No questions? Um, at the moment, comments. Only speaking yeah. louder. There's a lot of comments of beautiful voices asking for some specific songs that we're trying to do that if, if we have the time. But send your questions, send your comments if you have any. Okay. So this song is on the first page on the bottom. A song for her she usually comes down and she, she's, she manages to settle and to come into herself I think that's that's how we usually say here yeah I think it's also helpful if it's the same song for the same walk each time that can be helpful to create that um, familiar space so I just got a message that Katie and Charlie are both watching the video with their parents. So hi guys. Hi Katie, hi Charlie. Um, okay, question here. Uh, no, you don't have to be a great singer to do any of those things. Trust me, I don't. I don't sing. I I'm the, I'm worse for music. But even like that, even if you go with your not like out of pitch voice and you don't know the rhythm very well if you just practice and be consistent that has a result and that has an effect on the child and Anna Harris always says our children are the most forgiven audience ever mm -hmm. and that's true so yeah I was just gonna say the same and I think that also applies to all the arts you know when I came I really didn't feel like I I could paint or draw any of that and I've really learned that it doesn't matter, don't let that stop you from painting with your child, drawing with your child or doing whatever you know your child likes. It doesn't matter whether you're good at it or not, you, you learn with your child and you, you know, and again we can also talk some other time about how we, what, what tricks there are to, mm -hmm. to making paintings and drawings look nice. <laughs> but. Um, you know, it's really, I've, I've learned that also, I, I would have never thought of myself as artistic and you just do it together and the children actually help us to kind of overcome our 
form inhibitions. Yeah, the main thing is to express, right? Is is finding different ways to express yourself. And a lot of kids, even if they cannot speak, they can actually come through what they are feeling and wanting through all, all of those things. You have an inner experience when you hear a song or when you hear a poem, right? Mm -hmm. And the same way, it's the child is going to have an inner experience and no matter if you know the child is verbal or non-verbal, I think there's, I don't think there's any child here that doesn't like singing <laughs> or music. I think that's yeah. kind of <laughs> everybody's favorite, usually. Yeah. And it's also okay, like, I mean, I remember when I was a young co-worker, I would sing to my students because they also like music, the songs I knew from popular music, you know. You know, if, if it doesn't have to be Biberon music. If, if you know other yeah. songs or you want to sing Lady Gaga to your child, <laughs> yeah. go, ahead, go ahead, they will enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, some of the children love it if you rap to them as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had our first rap, rap um, exposure in assemblies when we did Moana. That was, <laughs> yeah. that was very nice. We had the whole Blue Room rapping. <laughs> um. Parents want to know some meal songs that we can teach them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, the songs have like all different kinds. I don't think I put any music, <laughs> meal songs on our, on our paper, but I will add on the website after this. Do you, um, do you know from Faro's Dark? From Faro's Dark. Do you know from Faro's Dark? Yeah. So, this one we sing a lot here in, in Woodledge, so we're going to sing it to you and then we're going line by line and after the, the, the broadcast I'm going to put on the website. Okay. Let's do it. So, once we all together, twice randy. Sure. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> From Faro's dark and light filled air, green leaves growing. In all we eat, from light we feed, ripened in suns glowing, the fruits of earth to live we need, gratitude showing. From furrows dark and light filled air, green leaves growing, in all we eat, from light we feed, ripened in suns glowing. The fruits of earth to live we need, gratitude showing. So this one is a meal song. We usually sing either breakfast, lunch or, or dinner. And shall we go line by line? Yeah. Yeah. So Remember very loudly. So why don't you sing first the line? And then, and then we sing it back and all of you have to join. That Dang sounds man. good. <laughs> sing it over there as well. So, this is um, a Christoph Andreas Lindenberg song called From Furrows Dark. So the, the first line is From Furrows Dark in Light Filled Air. From Furrows Dark in Light Filled Air. From Furrows Dark and Light Filled Air. Green leaves growing, green leaves growing, in all we eat, from light we feed, in all we eat, from light we feed, in all we eat, from light we feed, ripened in suns glowing, ripened in suns glowing. Ripened in suns glowing. The fruits, the, <laughs> the fruits of earth to live we need. The fruits of earth to live we need. The fruits of earth to live we need. Gratitude showing. Gratitude showing. Gratitude showing. Once we all together again. <clears throat> Why don't we sing it twice and you guys sing along? Yeah. <laughs> Let me know in the chat if it worked. <laughs> Oh, 
from me. <laughs> I really hope other people also just wanted to keep joining in with Natalie. It's a very exciting, effective song. <laughs> and as I said, like, we have a lot of those songs and we are very lucky to have here Christopher Andreas with us and he did write a lot of our songs and they are beautiful songs and we will try to keep them available as much as possible. And um, yeah, we're almost out of time already. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> We've been talking for almost one hour. Um, so if you have any questions, you have 10 minutes to, s to send them before we have to say goodbye for today. And if you also have any suggestions for future broadcasts, please let us know and we'll do another one as soon as possible. Um, introductions again. Yes, uh, we can introduce introduce ourselves again. Uh, my name is Michael, I'm the house parent in Woodledge. I'm Stefan, I'm the 11th grade teacher right now. I'm Natalie, I'm also a house parent in Woodledge. I'm Andreas, I'm the director of programs here. I also teach in the 12th grade together with Vishan and I'm in Rowan with my wife, co-house parent. <laughs> <laughs> and we all live here in the community, we all are a part of the Campio School community for many years. Um, so now that we're almost finishing, um, I would like some advice. So we can think for a moment. What would we say for the parents that are watching us? What is the, the essential about creating a healthy rhythm for their, their house community? during this period period that we are going through now. So we think for a moment, we ponder our question and who wants to start? Hmm. <laughs> I have one thing come to mind. I think the main thing is Let's speak up. Sorry. Nice and loud. All right. I had one thing come to mind especially and that's you know how Rhythm brings security and how we talked about that. But I think somebody said earlier when they were talking also how important it is that it's something that works for you also and your family. So I think especially now, you know, try to do the things you have to do and just try to take your student, your child along. For example, if you need to cook a meal, well, depending on who your student is, they might actually want to join and they might not be able to do everything but they might be able to do part of it and be helpful maybe it's just bringing you the bowl from the cupboard over there or maybe it's helping you chop something or maybe it's helping you stir in the pot or whatever it is right so i think the main thing is just try to create activities that anyways need to happen and then yeah just try to try to do it in a way that it's predictable like you have to repeat it so it can be i mean i'm not I guess we're not hoping for weeks, but like, <laughs> right? If it's Monday, it's your cooking day. Or maybe you cook every morning with your student, right? So today, I actually just know what's coming. And that's very helpful and reduces anxiety a lot. Um, and it's just also a nice experience, right? You don't, you don't want to create something on top of having to cook now for your family, right? Just do it together. It helps you keep your sanity and it also helps your, your child to feel... Like they're able to help and contribute and I think that's very important. Yeah. I think to reiterate what Andrea said before is trying to keep the times of things. So try to keep the same wake time in the morning and bedtime at night and that the meals are somewhat at the same time each day. Breakfast, lunch and supper, dinner. It's good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if that quite belongs to rhythm, but something I'm thinking about now that we do here and that I know as a parent myself is very challenging to do with your own children is to have a certain level of expectation. And, you know, and that's always easier when you have maybe a little bit the educator's distance. Um, I know that when the teachers of my children tell me what they're supposedly capable of doing, I'm always surprised, but <laughs> because I don't see it at home. But, you know, there's this element that, um, and again, I know this is different for many 
probably individually very different, but we try to, to have some level of expectation for all of our students to, at one point in the day that they participate in an activity which is maybe not play or something preferred, you know. So I know, you know, some, many children would prefer to just play the whole day and sometimes, you know, whether it's cooking or an errand or doing a functional task or doing chores, you know that we expect all of these things of all of our students here. And while I know that that's challenging probably for many of you to do at home, I you know, would encourage you to try to find, and even if it's just five minutes a day doing one task, to, to have also a certain level of expectations. I think nobody expects you to have the same level of expectations as we do here as a school, but it can actually be helpful in order for you to maintain your rhythm and throughout the day and to not feel like you're entertaining your child the whole day, but you're also, you know, helping them do a meaningful task. Um, so anyways, um, I know that that's probably a challenge, but that's an integral part of mm -hmm. how, how we work with rhythm here. And I think it's important for you all at home to remember that here we have a village. So be forgiving to yourself. Yeah. Don't, don't think that you will be able to do what 10 people here do every day. And that's okay. As Stefan said, pick one thing that you're already doing anyway. And, and then work on those things. And uh, Diane just asked a question that it is a big question, but it is also what we are talking right now. That is... Um, if a child is resisting an activity or a chore, how do we know when to push and how do we know when to let go? I can talk about myself. <laughs> like, there's days that I don't want to do anything. And there's times I'm like, okay, I don't want to take this cup now, but I can try again in five minutes. And, and it's, it's, it's difficult, but I think all of our students, they go through those moments as well. And it's, to recognize when to push and when to let it go, it's, it's difficult, mm -hmm. but it's a very human thing as well, right? Yeah. I think part of it is also when there's new things to do, there's often um, resistance. Um, transitions are hard. So it might be that the first three or four times you do have to push harder and then after that it will get easier to do that task, whatever it is. Um, Again, it's just feeling out uh, what the mood is. I mean, I think one very objective rule that we have here, or that we, you know, that we help each other to uphold is that when, and, and again, I know that's probably harder as a parent, certainly is for me with my own children, is um, to, when we get emotional, or whether when we feel we get upset, then we need to stop or somebody else needs to take over mm -hmm. because that is not the right way to you know approach a situation um, at the same time you know we know that children all children and also our students they will feel a sense of you know if, if we reward them by letting them get out of things they're probably going to do it again so it is always the, the, i think there's no clear-cut answer mm -hmm. you know and we i think we have a way of um, maintaining our expectations for long periods of time and being very patient and persistent but I, I would say to you as parents also I mean in my experience with my own children it's never helpful when I get emotional mm -hmm. and usually I regret it very quickly when I've uh, done something or when I've said something to my son out of an emotional place rather than out of a kind of calm state and I you know, I know that that's hard. So I think that's one of the kind of rules and sometimes it's better to, you know, to try again another day if, if you feel yourself getting upset. And maybe again, the other thing we do is we, um, I think the educators, they call it scaffolding. We, um, we uh, tear the tasks apart into smaller pieces so that maybe we, we start with a very low expectation that's maybe 
more manageable and that's mm -hmm. not such a big deal. Maybe we can establish that, that that's something that the child does every day and then we, we add another small piece. So mm -hmm. um, that can sometimes be helpful to, rather than saying now I have no expectations because I failed with this idea, to say, well, is there something I can ask of the student that's maybe shorter or easier and so that we establish some sort of um, routine with something. So it's, it's kind of like instead of, hey, here's your room, clean the entire thing. It's like, no, let's come and let's just wipe this table for now. Mm -hmm. and, that's, mm -hmm. and just repeat that over and over again so that becomes a, a rhythm and something they can manage and have success doing it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what you were talking about of the, the steering the pot. Maybe that's... And I think it's important to also have, be successful. I think it really helps you and it will help your, your child to feel like, no, we managed this, right? And it's, it's actually called a positive upward spiral at, at times also, right? You, you have a positive experience and you build upon that more and more and more. And so that encourages you to just keep going and to accomplish those tasks also, right? Because, yeah, it can be overwhelming to see a big task. And the other thing that I still wanted to say also, I think we're sometimes very hard on ourselves and, and say, oh, you know, oh my God, I failed this right now. But I think it's also okay to make a compromise at times to say, okay, maybe not now, but in an hour you will do that, whatever I just asked you to do. And I think that's, yeah, it just goes right back to expectations, what we talked about earlier. I do think expectations are important, but yeah, it's... Yeah. It's, it's got a lot to do with the sense that you need to have for the situation, right? And it's also okay to try something and maybe it doesn't work greatly the first time, but it mm -hmm. will eventually work. <laughs> yeah, and we usually find that if you try to approach things with a sense of joy and fun and humor, mm -hmm. then it tends to go a little better. Yeah. Uh, so we're almost out of time. Um, one of the things that we, we do here a lot in, in the Campus School and that Natalie spoke a lot about is, is this rhythm of like we start the day at the same time, we finish at the same time. And it's also that idea of like opening and closing and that helps to, to relax and to understand that, okay, for today it's done. Now we go to bed, now there's a different rhythm. Now you go to rest. And the, the evenings are very important that, and we won't have time to talk too much about the evenings. Uh, maybe we can do an entire one hour conversation only about how to settle your child, because I know that that's a struggle for a lot of people. But coming together as a family to finish the day and to say, now it's time to go to bed, it's really important. And there's one song that we do here a lot in a lot of houses, and we're going to finish teaching that song and then we have one last song just to kind of close this conversation and uh, let's do Oh How Lovely and that's most of the students favorite evening song <laughs> throughout this school so um, should we do again one time all together and then we go into lines and then we do one more time together and then we move on yeah. So um, we one time all together, we split into a round and then we stop and then we go line by line. Yeah. What she said. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, how lovely is the evening, is the evening, when the bells are sweetly ringing, sweetly
sweetly ringing, sweetly ringing. When the bells are sweetly ringing, sweetly ringing. When the bells are sweetly ringing, sweetly ringing. Ding dong, sir. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. It's the most difficult line. <laughs> ding. Remember, we're all together, stay safe, and we're going to finish with a treat. So, Anna Harris came to help us. Flora, are going to join us as well? I don't know what happened. We're going to sing <laughs> music alone because oh, yeah. it's an amazing <laughs> song. <laughs> and <Picture>. remember, <laughs> singing helps and staying together, even if we're not physically close together, also helps. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll let you know when we have a next one, okay? <clears throat> Guide us. Oh, Things shall perish from under the sky. Music alone shall let, music alone shall let, music alone shall let. shall perish from under the sky. Music alone shall let, music alone shall let, music shall perish from under the sky. Music alone shall let, music alone shall let, music shall Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye. Have to walk there to say to press pause. Finish event.